Hi mate, got this barbecue from the side of the road. I'm planning to turn it into a furnace for curving my perspex for the windows. If you remember from the last blob I did, I buggered up the epoxy resin mix and the glue didn't go off. So this is me peeling the glue off. It came off pretty easy. I use this opportunity to do some more grinding. I should have probably ground back as far as what I've done now the first time, but luckily <laughs> the glue didn't go off, you know? Not sure what top coat they used last time they painted this, but yeah, it's got all these craze, crackly stuff that doesn't come off real easy. All the white blobs of flow coat are there from the repairs, the holes that I drilled through the deck to hold the stuff underneath the deck while it was flipped upside down. This part bit here is a pain in the ass. It's going to be bad to fiberglass and it's going to be bad to sand. If you notice, this side of the deck has a lot of porosity in all the gel coat and it's also a different colour to the other side. The other side's all red. It's like they used red gel coat on one side and white on the, this side. This six inch grinding disc is my favorite. And it's in good nick. It's not clogging up. Red, white, gel coat. This is me trying to figure out if I go deeper with this gel coat, if it'll turn into white, but it doesn't. It's here thick. Love working in the shed when I know it's raining heavy. It's but it's sad looking at the hull collecting with the water. I'd love to have one of those routing arms, <laughs> you know, one of those machines. I put a 45 on it because I wanted to put a piece in here, you'll see. I'm cutting the piece here just out of hardwood. It'll just bank it a little bit nicer. I won't use as much bog bog. Um, and that's where the back of the dash will mate into or lie on top of. 
I copped a bit of flack about the weight of all the parts that I'm making for the boat, and really, the dash isn't that heavy. But the 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 dash that I cut out was heavy as well, so it's about the same heaviness. It's pretty easy to get it lined up because it's such a snug fit. There's four areas where the dash leans against and that's where the screws that I did last time. So I didn't really show in the last video how I got the levers for the dash. After doing the dummy fit, I found that I needed to grind down the, the little tabs that I just, the little extensions that I was working on before. I have to do that a few times to get it to sit right. The old holes are still in it from where I screwed it or I tacked it together with screws last time I glued it. So it made it a lot easier to get the levels good. But I managed to get the the dash a little bit nicer, I think, the, the levels on it I'm talking about. And I used my lasers last time because I've got the hull, uh, I've got the deck all level from the laser, so the deck should all be straight. And measuring from the top of the deck to the top of the dash is the most accurate way to make sure that I've got the dash symmetrical. This is where I've got the four screws that locate where the dash needs to be. I'm using platinum epoxy resin. It's a little bit cheaper than West Connect, or West System, sorry. Mixing it at five to one. I dispensed the hardener into one container and the base into the other container just to make it easier to measure it out accurately into one of those measuring cups. And then I always use a drill. Normally I put a lid on top of the, the drill that has like a hole punched out so the dust doesn't go everywhere. I was probably too lazy there. So this is me gluing the dash in. I um, just prop one side up at a time with all the screws out and I um, put the glue on and uh, and then just let it sit down. It's pretty easy. Once I got enough glue, I just put it, let it drop down, and then I uh, put the screws in that I found the locations for before when I was dummy fitting. I used a length of wood to prop each side up. Then while the glue's still wet, I um, just double check all the measurements a thousand times and adjust the screw holes accordingly, just so I get it as accurate as I possibly can. But I need to learn not to be so fussy, otherwise I'm never gonna get the boat done. But it's pretty close. I'm thinking it's within two to three mil. It's, it's, it's pretty straight, but I, like, I feel like I'll never finish anything if I try and make everything perfect. Like that already took forever. It took easy hour and a half, two hours just to glue that in four spots and then wiggle it around and make sure that it was all good. Anyway, yeah. <sighs> If this works, I'll be so stoked. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this bit. I'm probably gonna put the glass through there. 
and then wrap it around the back like that and then I'll, I'll wait for that to harden and then I'll grind this bit here and then yeah just glass it like that and this cup holder's got to go I stuffed up this is where the actuator is going so this phone holder and that might not even be there And then I've got to do the same thing with that. Originally, I thought that I'd uh, just fiberglass it and then bog it, but the straight um, edges there aren't that straight, so I end up bogging it. So I need to fill this bit in so I can fade the glass onto there and kind of onto there. <laughs> and I'm just going to use one sheet of uh, one sheet of cloth, <laughs> whatever you call it. Those sheets that I made, and I'll just like bend it to that shape, but it's all going to be underneath. And then I'll just hot glue gun it there. Okay, so I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I was gonna put formwork all behind here, but instead, what I'm thinking of doing is glassing along here. Oh, like I'll wet the sheet first and wet the, the boat. Um, so I'll go that way and then I'll glass underneath there. And I'll just like do two layers and hopefully it will not fall down. And I'm gonna try and do two layers from the back of there as well. So just like this. And hopefully that'll work, let's see. But before I do any of that, I want to use polyester um, with flow coat and I'll mix some uh, Q-cell and aerosol and I'll fair a lot of this I'll go to about here because after I start doing stuff there with epoxy I'm pretty much um, I pretty much have to do epoxy from then on because uh, I just wanted to show you guys this it's I tried to grind down to good stuff, but I'm worried that there's going to be nothing left. It's very thin, very thin in this area. And it's the entire driver's side or right hand side of the top of the deck. It's pretty annoying. Everything's all rounded. So I'm thinking about putting a couple of layers of glass on it and trying to start fading it into the dash with wait for it to cure and then I'll straighten it up better with some bog and then do another two layers of glass over it. So here I'm pre-wetting the fiberglass that I'm putting on. I'm just using tri uh, biaxle. Here I do the tricky fiberglassing, I just tuck it under the, the formwork. The first two sheets I just put on were just there to stre strengthen just the part that is on the formwork, just to beef it up. Now 
onto glassing behind the dash. This is my little experiment. I do it in two short pieces just to get around the curve easy without cutting it and stuffing around. That went a lot better than I thought. <laughs> Now some fancy pants fiberglassing around the uh, dash here to connect the dash. I think that turned out pretty good with very little effort. That's my favorite when things work easy. I've actually spent longer deciding on doing it than actually how long it took. I'll just clean that up. This is later that night. I, um, while it's still gonna have a chemical bond, I just fill up, everything's stiff enough now. The, the sheets were behind the dash and that's so when I do glass from the outside, it, it flows on nice. So this, sheet goes through there and then onto there and then I still need to do another sheet of glass from there around like that and kind of like fade it around this square bit it's a bit of a pain it's not that bad and uh, I should have really th thought how I'd, I'd, yeah, how to merge it into there. That side's all right, but this side's pretty, how you going? It's a big gap here. So I'm not sure if I fade it here like that and just fill that up with glue <laughs> or, um, yeah, I don't know. But this side is a lot trickier. But, so that, that bit goes like that and then scoops around like that and up there too. So I need to do the same thing to that one. So last night was a very late night. I should have put um, peel ply on, I forgot. Idiot. Anyway, I'm gonna grind it back a bit. It'll still be a chemical bond. It's only, I don't know, six hours dry or something. <laughs> so I, I need to add a little bit more glass around that area and probably around there and then grind this up so it's nice. And then what I'm thinking while I was doing all this other stuff was um, I'll I'll get some melamine, my favorite, and um, to save on trying to get it straight and everything, I'm gonna make like a big straight thing that rests on, uh, it's too hard for me to explain. <laughs> I'll show ya. I'm pretty much just making a straight edge out of melamine because everything releases from it easy. I don't even use any release agent. And here I am putting epoxy resin with Q-cell and aerosol and then just sitting the melamine down to make it all straight. Turns out good. I wanted to beef up around where the hatch what went into. Um, it's pretty thin in two spots because it had like this funny recess, uh, this protrusions for these stupid looking hinges that it had that I'll probably still reuse. So this is gonna give me a real good 
straight edge to glass around. But that'll be in the next episode. It's back. Shit job. <laughs>